and welcome to this I is. I always do the intro. No, Matt. I did the intro. What? Hello and welcome to this is Austin. Yes. PlayStation and Sony are hemorrhaging money with the PS5. Wait, they're, they're supposed to do that. That's how consoles work. Correct. Recently in a report uh, with a call with shareholders, uh, it's the board of Sony, it's the board, right? Like, Who's on a earnings call? Yeah, yeah like I guess CFO, a bunch of big titles. Basically, they had some good news that they sold over 4 million PS5s. 4.5 to be roughly exact. I mean, that is actually an exact statement. 4.5 million PS5s in the holiday quarter, which I think is November, December, I believe, for Sony. Yeah. The first two months of being on sale. Which, which I would say, which does it? beat out the PS4. Slightly. By point. One million. So that's a hundred thousand. You know what? They probably waited their earnings call. Like they stopped counting like one day later so they could sell that last handful of PS5s at the at the factory. So here's the thing, right? This is good news for Sony because it means that of course, surprise, surprise, people like the PS5. And I have to admit, I will I'll say I was wrong. I'm wrong a lot. You guys well, tell you're me actually usually time. right. You're usually right about like AMC and I'm, movie theaters. I'm right and, yeah. But I had said that I thought there was gonna be like a hundred thousand. PS5 that was sold. 4.5 million. That was like lot. somewhat of a facetious number. No, I can't say that. Facetious. My, yeah, I can't say that with my list. That's fine. But that was somewhat of a made up number, but I did not think it was going to be 4.5 million. So. Which is great news. And it is very clear that Sony would have sold way more if they could have produced way more, right? Yes. Like every PS5 that is arriving on a store shelf is immediately the little kid who's about to buy it is punched in the face by some 25 year old <laughs> dude who takes it and flips it on eBay, which of course is a problem, right? And we've yeah. talked about this before. Mo well, I don't wanna say most, a lot of consoles are currently in resellers' hands and a lot of people don't actually have their consoles. So I, I, I don't know how many actually of these consoles have been activated yet. Probably somewhat less than 4.5 million. Yeah, I like, I would say it's about 50-50. Just I'm like looking through like Reddit and like seeing all these people who still can't get one versus like how many people who can get one you they're so abundant on ebay that like it's it's hard to say like oh that people actually have these things yeah but it's not like sony is making money on all like when you start seeing all these uh ps5s being sold for a thousand dollars sony doesn't make any of that they're still losing money on that which and that's is what a lot of people don't realize and that's one of the things we learned with this earnings report surprise surprise sony are selling you that 500 hundred dollar ps5 at a loss. Now, this is not something brand new for the console industry, right? Typically speaking, it, it, like you said, I guess, if, unless you're talking about Nintendo, typically speaking, companies such as Sony, such as Microsoft, such as Sega, I guess, uh, such as- What year is it? Activision, I don't know, I'm just going Activision doesn't make consoles. It's fine. They sell consoles at a loss, which is reasonable. You think something like the PS3, that was an incredibly expensive console day one, and they were still losing money on it because Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, they make most of their money not by selling you the console. Oh no, they make their money by selling you the games, selling you the online services, selling you the streaming, selling you videos, selling you Spotify, selling you Game Pass. So you're just explaining app stores in any yeah, platform. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Now what makes this generation of consoles slightly different is that we have two versions of each of these consoles at significantly different price points, which normally we don't have. Normally when a console launches, we just have the console and then there's cheaper, more efficient models later on where yeah. they can perfect um, manufacturing, which is cheaper to manufacture, it, whatever. But yeah. so now we have PS5 and then we have the digital edition, which is being sold at even more of a loss. Yeah. But then the real <laughs> big loss is the Xbox Series S. So here's the thing, right? PS5 and Series X are both $500. I bet they're losing money on those because you have to also consider that not only do you have to consider how expensive it is to manufacture and sell the console, but the Best Buys and the Amazons of the world take a cut of yep. that, sometimes a fairly substantial cut, right? So once you actually get it imported and pay all your taxes and all that kind of stuff, these consoles are expensive. But then you look at the PS5 Digital Edition, which is $400 instead of 500 bucks. That, the difference in the hardware between the two consoles I'll be generous and say it's twenty dollars, right? Which I I think that's ten times more than what it actually is. I think I think there's like it's like a two dollar drive that they're putting in there when it's, you're buying in bulk. For for the Blu-ray, I think I've heard estimates that somewhere in like the fourteen fifteen dollar range to buy like yeah. a million Blu-ray drives. But regardless, 
Sony lose a lot of money on the digital compared to the standard, but it doesn't even really hold a candle to what Microsoft are doing. So to be fair, Sony have admitted that they are like they had lost a little bit of money or they, the revenue wasn't as high because they were losing money on PS5 individual sales. Now there was a rough estimate. This is not in any way like a valid number, it's just an estimate from Bloomberg that it costs about $450 to manufacture a PS5. That checks out. You yeah. add the shipping, you add obviously all, all the R&D that needs to be paid off, and the fact that you know, you're know you probably selling it to Amazon for what, 430 or $450 or whatever their yeah. actual cut is, makes sense, right? But you look over on the Microsoft side. Series X is in a similar sort of boat. I do think the Series X is more expensive to manufacture. I agree. We've discussed this in the past. It has a more advanced cooling system. It is just a physically bigger chip, which just naturally means it's going to be more expensive. But then you look at the Series S, right? The Series S is $300, which is very reasonable, I would say, uh, for any kind of brand new console. There are SSDs that they sell that are almost that price, right? And this has the entire system in. Sure, it doesn't have a disk drive, but as we talked about, the disk drive is like 15 bucks. It doesn't have the advanced cooling, but that's another 20, 30 bucks, right? The Series S, they're probably also losing money on. Now, unfortunately, Microsoft does not break down their sales like Sony does, right? So we know that they've sold 4.5 million PS5s. We have no idea how many Xboxes they've sold. This actually dates back to the Xbox One days, right. where when the PS4 was completely wiping the floor with the Xbox One, Microsoft stopped announcing how many actual sales they have. And they, I think they report, is it like monthly users or active I think it's subscriptions active, or something yeah, like, like that? Of Xbox Live subscription? I, I figure what it is. It's, but it's active not, gamers or whatever. It's not a, a great number. Like, it's not a great way to tell because there's so many variables in that. Yeah. But yeah, like, this doesn't tell the full story, though, with, like you say, they're losing money on these. But at the same time, on what they're losing the most money with consoles, you could argue that they're making the most money on those. Sure. Every console that goes out, so say there's a PS5 and it has a five year lifespan of someone's yeah. going to be using it, right? In that five years, how many games are you gonna buy? How many months of PS Plus are you gonna pay for? How many ra random like PlayStation Now games are you gonna stream? Or, or whatever the case is. There's a lot of money that adds yeah. up there, which is how Sony and Microsoft pay for these ridiculously expensive sort of R&D projects to create consoles. And when, when, you, when you don't have a disk drive, you're forced to get everything digitally through the store, yep. which- Hurts GameStop. We, we, <laughs> that's why my- Stonks. Um, <laughs> not gonna rant Stonks. about how much money I lost. Um, well, like as you guys have said, you like having physical games because a lot of you like the resale value, you being it, being able to buy them cheap, whatever. Well, digital games rarely go on sale. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, it's not it's not never, but they rarely do. Less often than Walmart's blowing out an old copy of Sonic and Mario Go but to the Moon. Ignore sales completely. All right, like to take two games, digital version sixty bucks, uh, seventy in the case of of PlayStation. But so, all right, both of them are seventy dollars. One's physical, one's digital. When you have the physical one, you have the manufacturing costs to actually manufacture, distribute, all that stuff for the physical disc. Then there's the retailer cut with GameStop, Amazon, anything like that. And then there's the resale value of it, where is if someone goes and turns it into GameStop and it gets sold back, they're not making any of that money. Whereas one console, one digital a, a, a copy of it. That's full 70, that's, obviously there's the cut of the of, of the developer, but that's, for the rest of it, pure profit. I think I got the amount of numbers that were correct got, in that sentence. You got about halfway through. I did, yeah. I did start throwing so, extra numbers there. No, but it makes sense, right? Clearly they make more money on the digital versions, and clearly, like the PC space has shown, things are moving in that direction. But you know what sort of throws a wrench in this whole argument? Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft have different approaches to the way that they sell things. Because like we discussed, the Switch is sold at what we believe to be a, probably a slight profit, right? If it's a $300 Switch, they probably make a little bit on each yeah. console, which has always been the way Nintendo does things, right? They'll typically have like less powerful hardware that will be able to hit a price point which is more reasonable. So here's a fun fact. They sold 4.5 million PS5s. Yep. They probably sold a similar number of Xboxes, very clearly, Sony Microsoft sold every single PlayStation and Xbox they could make right. for the holiday quarter. The Switch sold almost 12 million units 
over the slightly longer period, three months instead of two months. But that is the biggest quarter for the Switch ever, including the launch quarter, including when all of these crazy games came out, like when uh, Animal Crossing came out last year. None of the quarters have ever been as much. In fact, the Switch is actually now past the 3DS for the most units sold in Nintendo consoles, which is crazy because the Switch has been out for like three years now? Which Four is, years, something in, like that? Again, in pure Nintendo fashion, they have so many Switch sales that they're like, you know what, we're gonna stop making the DS now. Yeah, so they are still, yep. they did announce, I think they had like 700,000 3DS, uh, 700, 3DS games sold. The 3DS is clearly drifting away, which is fine, right? It but makes sense. That's always how Nintendo's done some done stuff. Again, if we didn't have the Sega, we would never have the SNES because they will just sell it, sell it, sell it. And because clearly it works, people are buying them until there's a need to make something different. And yeah. right now there is no need. There's a lot, been a lot of talk about Switch Pro and all that kind of stuff, which should probably happen at some point. But as but, long as Nintendo are selling yeah, every why, Switch why they can make, it? Yeah. Why, why would this? Why would they put out the Switch Pro right now when yeah. so many are buying just regular Switches? It's interesting to think about how the space is because Sony and Microsoft, specifically Microsoft, I will say, can afford to lose a good chunk of money on you know building and designing Xboxes and everything because for them the game is get you on Game Pass. Yes. Right. They want you to sign up for that monthly recurring revenue that you're going to keep for years and years as you buy games as you. Rent? How do you actually would you describe the game on Game Pass? As you, it's the same model. Borrow it. It's your your stream it. Your stream. It's streaming download. They have to know. pay a they have to pay a licensing fee every right. time that's that's streamed. Um, but I mean, so many of the games are now being owned by for there are so many first party titles. Like that's the big thing that all these companies are doing is buying bigger yeah bigger uh, developers. So that way everything's first party. It's hard to talk about Game Pass without at least mentioning. I know this is. A, couple weeks now that this happened but the price hike that xbox tried to do yeah it just kind of shows we didn't even make a video on it because it was like over it in was, like a it few was hours. over in, in a couple hours yeah but um you know that just goes to show you they don't care about selling you the console they care about selling you the service because yeah. if you want to take advantage of the console you need the service mm -hmm. so well uh as we talk about streaming games there was also news recently that stadia have sort of killed off their development which, arm not surprising I at got, all i got stuff to say about that as well all right i know everyone everyone make sure to subscribe like the video and ringling the dingling bell before i make my opinion because note. matt's about to talk about streaming games and Big please shot. don't wa stop watching the video. Pay attention, y'all. It's about to get spicy. Matt, hit us with your Stadia hot take. All right, this is not actually me pitching for for cloud gaming. Okay. I really do. I still, I mean, it does solve a lot of problems. Whatever. Skip it. I mean, the correct answer, so, but whatever. I don't blame Stadia for for get for killing their their uh, uh, studio like this because it's a gamble and basically what they're trying to do is say, all right, we're gonna take a we're gonna we're gonna invest in a brand new mm -hmm. uh, developer yes and just hope that they make a blockbuster game yes that can support our entire platform yeah that sounds about right that after is, the platform's already been stood up yeah, that's that's besides the point because this just happened with uh, amazon as well mm -hmm. they uh with luna they had their uh their fp their first person shooter game that they were going to try and do that they canceled because it's not a good business model to be like we're going to put literally all our eggs in one basket yeah Whereas what they can say is, all right, we're gonna, we'd rather just, instead of putting billions of dollars towards developing, it's easier just to pay licensing fees to get GTA V, which is the best selling game almost of all time. So like, yeah. I mean, granted, neither one of them have that yet, but that's like, that's where they're kind of going out to. So yeah. I don't blame them for that. I mean, I think Stadia is on a very clear path to one of two options. First of all, closing. Second of all, becoming more of a white label service of I like, Ubisoft, do you want to stream Ubisoft games? You use it through our Stadia backend or partner with Stadia well, so like exactly, Luna's trying to exactly do. That's exactly what Luna's trying to do yeah. right now. There's a lot of talk here about different ways that the industry is going, but I think the main takeaway is this. Sony are selling every PS5 they can make. It is going to be a while before they're back in stock in any kind of regular fashion. Same thing on the Xbox side. The Series S is starting to become a little bit more popular, or at least available. But, I mean, Microsoft has straight up said that they expect it could be easily into June or later before yeah. the Series X is in regular supply. And the funny thing about all of it is they're losing money. Almost like if you purchased some questionable crypto or uh, stock or 
future or something uh, that would be unfortunate. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode of This Is. Again, please make sure to ring -a the ding-a-ling bell because otherwise Matt will not be able to pay rent this month. Please.